tilt your head to your right. You better get ready. You better get ready. It's on now. Appalachia is a unique place with incredible people and stories. It holds some hidden relics of the past that few know about. I'm Clay Newcomb, and this is the Bear Grease Roadshow. I've been a bear hunter for much of my life. America has a rich and deep tradition of bear hunting in the north, south, east, and west. But I haven't found a place where it's more ingrained in the culture than Southern Appalachia. The mountain hollows of Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee have played host to some of the most quintessentially American cultural traditions, which going all the way back to the colonial days has been bear hunting with hounds. Hound hunting is deep in our hunting heritage and it's alive and well today. But more than hunting, Appalachian culture is known for close-knit families, hospitality, farming, quilting, and even bluegrass music. Yet there's one thing born and bred in these mountains that's fascinating to me, and that's the state dog of North Carolina, the American plot. Originally bred as bear and hog dogs in the mid-1700s by the Plot family in Haywood County, North Carolina, Plots are the only breed of tree hounds that didn't descend from English foxhounds. These dogs are uniquely American and uniquely Appalachian. This is a really good example of a, of a young plot female. She's only about 45 pounds, which is about what a, a female range would be from 45 to maybe 65. She's a little bit on the smaller end for some plots, but I like that. She's got a saber tail. That's that mm -hmm. tail curves up like that. That's yeah. a tr plot characteristic. They want that. You've got, look at these ears. The ears are higher up on the head. They're not hanging all the way down here like bloodhounds. They got more of a rounder edge. Mm -hmm. They've got, even being a female, she's pretty fairly thick through the chest. You don't see any loose droopy skin. It's all athletic muscle. Yeah. She's got what we call cat paws, tight feet. Yeah, good feet. That The bear hunters want them with good feet, don't they? Yes, they do. And then, this, of course, the brindle coat. You know, there's a lot of dog breeds have brindle coats, but the plot is renowned for that and having, a, you know, this dog, Maggie, has got a kind of a darker base coat with the light stripes. You see some with a reverse um, color, too, where they'll have a light base coat with darker stripes. And she's been really good. But you can see they look really athletic. They have stamina, great stamina. Good girl. Bob, do you think a dog like this looks about like the dogs that they were hunting in the late 1700s, early 1800s? I do, Clay. I think, uh, you know, one thing that intrigues me and has always fascinated me about the breed is, you know, we've got photographs in the 1870s, actual photographs of dogs, and of course, many more in the early 1900s. She would have fit right in. She'd have fit right in. This is Bob Plot. He's a bona fide feller to be telling us about plot hounds because he's the great, great, great grandson of Johannes Plot, or George Plot, a teenage German immigrant who is believed to have brought over the original five dogs that would become the American plot hound. So these dogs were developed here in North Carolina and have since become a, 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 a worldwide yeah, breed. Absolutely, well, worldwide. Primarily dog. big game hunting dogs. Yes, sir. Tell me about the characteristics of the plot hound that make them plot hounds. The plot hound seems to combine you know, 
strength, stamina, athleticism, tenacity, grit, uh, but most of all intelligence. They just seem mm -hmm. to know how far to take it. You know, they get to the bear tree, go after a hog, whatever. They, they you don't see them getting too aggressive. They're just aggressive enough to you know bay the, the bear, tree the bear. But unlike an Airedale who will go in and try to kill the bear and get killed in the process, uh, the plot hound seems to just know like a bullfighter. They seem to know when to just get in and out. I think the second characteristic is that defines them, makes them truly a breed apart from other breeds is, is their story. It's a story like no other. Yeah. It's a story of classic Americana, of a dog named after a family who's been raising them for over 300 years. and. You know, when you look at these dogs and look at their face, touch their face, pet their heads, you're looking into the face of history. You see a lot of remnants of this family's heritage around here. The Plot Balsam Mountain Range is named after them. Their story, moving into what it was at the time, the frontier, was a bold, adventurous move in the 17 and 1800s. The black bear was a critical food source and the hides and fat a valuable commodity. But the dogs acting as protectors for both humans and livestock was equally important. So dogs had to serve more than one purpose. As time went on, word got out that the plots had some of the best bear dogs around, the most versatile dogs around, and folks started coming from all over, bringing their feed sacks just in hopes of bringing home one of those brindle bear dog puppies. Just as all good breeders do, the line was carefully recorded. And to this day, there exists a fairly clear picture of how these dogs were bred, who owned them, and more. Of course, as time went on, these dogs became more and more prized. So much so that the folks who are really into them are referred to as plot men. There aren't many who are better known than Mr. Roy Clark of East Tennessee. So many people look for a story or look to have to create a story. You know, Roy is the story. I've known Mr. Roy for several years and consider him a dear friend. As a matter of fact, he's a member of the Bear Grease Hall of Fame. And I was able to go to Mr. Roy's place in Tennessee and learn more about his dogs, philosophy on life, and bear hunting. You've built your your career, where you live, how you live, really in a lot of ways so that you can hunt and raise these dogs. Is that true? Would you say that's true? Yeah, I'd say it's true. And I probably not made some money that I could have made just uh, on count of it. Yeah. Because I wanted to hunt. I sure didn't want to go nowhere and live somewhere else because I don't want to be right here. And right there is the thing we don't often see or talk about in this world anymore. Connection to place is a powerful thing that I deeply respect. When I'm around Mr. Roy, I take note of how present he is with his world-class dogs, his abundant garden, and as you'll see later on, his family. In my opinion, this man is living the high life and he's rich on things not valued in the world of the present day. Mr. Roy is a relic of an Appalachia that's getting harder and harder to find. I have a lot of respect for him. What does it mean to you to catch a bear with a plot dog? Well, actually, to tell you the truth, to me, of being able to, to raise your pups, breed your dog, and to train them, to trail, jump your bear, catch your bear. That means a lot to me. But now, which I ain't got the money to do it, but if I had the money to go buy the best dog it was, it wouldn't mean as much to me as this dog I've raised and trained to do this yeah. myself. You did but it all on your you own. You could take money and you can do anything you want to. You can buy a whole pack of bear dogs. But to me, I get closer to them because I raise them and, and train them and do that to them. Yeah. And I, I, I don't believe you get as close to them if you just go out and buy them. Yeah. Yeah. They say if you want a pot hound, you better know somebody. 
These family lines of plots are usually kept close and rarely for sale. Mr. Roy could have named his price and sold dogs over the years, but he rarely has. A good bear dog is worth more than an American dollar can offer. You see, I'm a plot man myself, and I've been shown the way by some of the best. And Mr. Roy isn't the only one. There are great plot men scattered across Appalachia and this whole country. The plot dog is, is Appalachian. I mean, it, it's, it goes as far back as, as the Appalachians, you know, being called the Appalachians. They come right out of Haywood County, which isn't very far at all yeah. from right here. And, uh, you know, that's where they, that's where the plot family ended up at. And, and these dogs, they're, they're a big part of it. You know, they, uh, they just represent Southern Appalachia a lot. This is Dr. Daniel Pierce. He's one of the leading historians on Appalachian culture. People kind of see Appalachia as, as um, you know, British Elizabethan culture right. plopped down in the mountains and preserved in amber, you know, but that's not the way it was because there was a lot of interchange and give and take. And of course the plots brought their knowledge of, of, of hunting and dogs to this area. And then that mixed with um, you know, other folks' knowledge and, and traditions, you know, from the British Isles and, and that type of thing. So you have a, um, an amalgam of cultures that come together in this area and create something new. So it's not the preservation of something old, uh, exactly. In some ways mm. it is, but, uh, but it's the creation of something new. That, that is a product of this cultural interchange that happens. Yeah. People shape the land, but the land shapes people. Bear hunting here is more than a hunt. It brings families and communities together. We're at the world headquarters of the Laurel Mountain Bear Hunters Association, which is Mr. Roy's family and close hunting friends. It's an honor to be here. This is a starting roster for the Roy Clark Laurel Mountain bear hunting second week of the season. Kudzu, Cooker, Julianne, Magic, Dan, Justin, Birdie, Blaze, Sherry, Christy, BC, Sally, Whitey, Beauty, Dana, Rita, Blue, Ringgold, and Foxy. 19 dogs. I, these dogs are as good a bear dogs as there are in the world. I believe that. And they, they've got the decades to prove it too behind them. So basically the process works like this. We get up, get the dogs loaded, going up and down the road and a lot of us are driving around up different places and working as a team and the dogs are going to be smelling out of the sides of the truck and so we try to find where one's across the road or we call it winding that basically means that there's a bear up above the road and the wind's blowing down this direction and then the dogs can smell it and so what we then do is once we find a track we get one of our best dogs out we usually refer to that as a trail dog and we let them find the track, smell it, and then uh, usually an accomplished hunter will go with them and they'll try to look at the paw print All right, let's look for a track. and see which way the toes are facing, right? And then that'll let us know which direction the bear's going yeah. because if there's some refuges and wildlife preserves around here that if a bear's going in that direction or even toward the interstate, uh, real dangerous for the dogs, we don't want to run that bear. 
Uh, so once we find the direction of the dogs, or the direction the bear's going, we'll turn loose one or two dogs and they'll smell it, and that's called trailing. <laughs> It's a slow process, but once they get inside of the bear, you can tell the difference because the dog will actually bark differently, and that's called jumping the bear. So once the bear is jumped and they're actually inside of it, they run it. And what we then try to do is get somewhere where we can do what's called packing the dogs. But it's but it may grade right on towards spruce branches right here. No, it's gonna come up. It's gonna come up across this road out here. So we wanna pack the dogs, and that's usually your younger dogs, the ones that can run really fast. And if you can, you wanna catch your trail dogs, which are your older, more experienced ones off of it, and let the pack dogs run the bear. And usually, uh, they'll be putting more heat to it, right? We just kind of a way of saying it. And with that heat added to it, uh, it's usually a lot more likely to tree or to stop or something like that where we can get in there and kill it. So that, in a nutshell, that's our process from beginning to end. Look here, what he needs to do, he needs to turn that bear back off in the creek if he can. Before long, we found a track and the dogs are on to one. And we're trying to get as close as we can before we leave the road. The dogs made this one look easy, but it rarely is. After a relatively short race, they tree the bear. So the dogs tree the bear, it's a, it's a young female. So we're gonna let this bear go, not gonna shoot it. But uh, dogs did really good. And that's what these guys love, is they just love seeing their dogs work and do a good job, tree the bear. And that's the good thing about this kind of hunting is if you get to the tree and it's a, it's a female, it's a young one, you don't shoot it, you let it go. So, but this is a major win. So these dogs did good. here and see Michael. what I think Michael's got out here. It's a grub and track, but we're, we're about 150 yards down in there. So they found a track coming off the mountain and they're looking for where it went down. And they're gonna see how big the track is, and if it's a big enough bear that we think we'd be interested in going after, they'll turn dogs out. If not, we'll just keep on going, and try to find another track. But what happened here is the dogs rigged this bear, so they were driving. The dogs started barking. They stopped, and then they found the track in this in these leaves. These guys seeing tracks and leaves is really difficult. You you got to be have a super trained eye because it's not just like a bear track. It's like a just a just an indention, a smudge, and a pretty pretty detailed eye you got to have to be able to find a bear track in these leaves. Oh, they got hooker out. Ooh, it's getting serious. Yeah. <laughs> This dog he's got on this leash, its name is Hooker. It's their best, what they call trail dog, which that dog has a very good nose, a better nose than most of the dogs in the truck, and is just an experienced dog. And we believe a track. He's got it, they found the track. So all these other dogs couldn't smell it. Hooker, they got her out, she smelled it, and she will work a track really hard. A uh, trail dog is the most valuable dog in the pack, and they treat them like kings. So anyway, she did her job. They're gonna bring in the other dog. <laughs> did he go off the bank right back there? So we turned loose our trail dog 
started a real cold track it means it was made a long time ago we weren't even sure how it was going to turn out or you know if she was going to be able to trail it she did she opened up which means she started barking coming across a big holler here and so we're kind of driving around and kind of try to get in front of her she hadn't jumped the bear yet meaning the bear they meaning that uh that, I'm listening to the radio here. Roy, did y'all go on past Bear Pen? She's got it tree. I believe she's got it tree, Josh. Well, we just hacked these dogs, which means we had a couple of single dogs down there trailing a bear. We dumped a bunch of new dogs with them. So something's about to happen. I don't know if it'll be a big bear, a little bear, or if it'll get away from them, but something's about to happen. Go ahead. You watch that right there, and you watch that line. And don't let me run past them, okay? So we just cut in two dogs to a walking bear yeah. race down here. And they're going towards a road where a couple of our people are. Anyway, we're just listening to this race, seeing what it does. And we're going to stay up here high for a minute. Yeah, just in case you turn back, we'll be in front of it. We actually have to go to shooting. Okay. A lot of times these smaller bears will tree. Exactly. The bigger bears will want to walk with the dogs, meaning the dogs are right on them. The bear's not really afraid of it, and the bear's walking and moving and just kind of going slow, and that's what we got here. Yeah, so that's true. why we think it's probably a big bear. Yeah, that's why we think it's a good one anyway. Yeah. You know, for sure. It's good enough you don't want to climb. Yeah. So it ought to be a good bear. That's why you got to have dogs that are smart enough to not get hurt by the bear but also not afraid of it, so they're putting pressure on it, so hopefully it would tree or bay and stop. Yeah, that's great. So and it's a moving ball. Right. Right. You better get ready. You better get ready. It's coming forward down here? Yeah. Big boar, really big boar. Great way to end the hunt for sure. In this kind of hunting, all these guys, it really doesn't matter who kills a bear. It's kind of like as a group, did did you kill a bear? It's kind of different than a lot of hunting. Really neat. So everybody's just as happy when kills it. There's a big thing down under his neck. Tennessee monitors their bear populations closely, and this big male had been collared back in the summer, and we learned from the biologist that it had put on over 150 pounds of weight since the early summer. That's wild. Bears are thriving in Appalachia, and hunters are helping manage them. What is it that you most love about this? Uh, I guess it just, uh... I'm, it's it's actually in a way I guess like them dogs. Like, uh, bear hunting's bred into these dogs that we raise to hunt, you know. Yeah. And and the line and stuff. And I guess it's bred in me too because I've yeah. hunted my whole life and I just seem like I can't quit. Yeah. Them dogs is pretty good dogs, ain't they? <laughs> Don't you think? I'd say so. Good. They've shown me a bear every time I've been with them. Yeah, well, maybe you'll not come back no more. <laughs> it's easy for this to get in your blood. Video might make it look easy, but hunting with hounds is anything but easy. 
Hound hunters are some of the most dedicated and passionate people that I know. The Clarks have been raising plots for over 70 years and are masterful dog breeders. It takes persistence and some stick to itness to keep a family line of hounds. Relatively few can do it. The Laurel Mountain Bear Hunters are a unique group of welcoming people. It takes a community to make this work, and in today's world, something that brings families and communities together is significant. It's pretty telling that a dog as versatile and as intelligent as the plot hound would come out of a culture like this. Of all I've done in my life, I'm very proud to say that I've hunted with some of the incredible plot men of Appalachia one of which is Roy Clark.